Hello and welcome to this edition of Business Spotlight. My name is Reza Kododust from Action Coach, and I'm delighted to be joined today by uh, Paul Blair. Hi, Paul. Hi, Reza. Thanks for having us. Great to have you um, on, on our uh, on our podcast. Uh, Paul is the CEO of um, ACRX, a wearable technology business. Um, so, Paul, um, first of all, welcome, obviously, again. Uh, tell us a little bit about your business. Please. We are a wearable technology company. So we started four years ago. A uh, typical startup story. Uh, it's been an absolute slog. We had a couple of near-death experiences, particularly tough going through COVID uh, and the lockdown period, as it was for so many of us. But uh, we're through the other sides, and we started shipping products in January this year and hitting some key milestones and really excited to be scaling the business. Great, great. Um, so you're essentially an online business, and um, you know I know that you your background is uh, of an entrepreneurial nature, and you've done different businesses before. Uh, what what inspired you to start your businesses? This one and the previous ones. What what gets you? What got you started? A lot of it came from personal experience. Um, mm-hmm. I, I did a business degree, but then spent uh, almost twenty years in the army. But I always had that interest in in business and starting my own. And during my military career, would read lots of business books and was inspired by the likes of Richard Branson, you know, some uh, and some other fantastic entrepreneurs. And always had that that itch in the back of my mind. So this business, based on personal experience, I was uh, on a ski trip with a friend. Uh, the joke is he very selfishly injured himself on day three of this trip. So I was. <laughs> being by myself listening to music and podcasts but couldn't get a gloved finger to to my headphones and I love my tech and my gadgets and I thought there must be an easier way to control primarily music when you're using both hands or wearing a, a big pair of gloves and that was the uh, the basis for for the idea okay so there was you know from personal experience you, you found the gap in the market um and what would you say you attribute the growth to uh, of your business, what's been the contributing factor to that? Listening to customers, we did a lot of market research. I wanted some sort of validation that my crazy idea was not just going to fulfill a need that that I uh, realized was there, but we did a lot of market research. We did a lot of testing of prototypes, changing the design, and eventually ending up after four prototypes and almost two years of, of design, coming up with a product that, that ticked so many boxes. And um, yeah, primarily it's from listening to customers. And we were still doing that. The hardware pretty much does what it says on the tin, although we're making incremental changes, but we see longer term value coming from the software. And a lot of that is driven from customer conversations and um listening to uh, improvements uh, or developments that we can incorporate. Okay. And was there any, um, uh, was there a, a, a turning point, a, a milestone that you would say um, that had an impact on on the growth of the business and and, and where you are today? Um, not so much in this business. Um, I know in, the, in my last one when, again, based on personal experience, I invented a dog toy and brought it to market and... I always look back on my appearance on Dragon's Den and um, not so much getting turned down for investment, but being told, being called stupid. And uh, Duncan Bannatyne famously said that he wouldn't invest because we would never sell many. I remember leaving the den just, and that was the, the rocket fuel for my motivation to prove them wrong. If uh, if nothing else, I knew there was demand there. We couldn't make them fast enough, a bit like um, our wearable tech at the moment. But I left the den wanting to prove them wrong. And um, yeah, we did. We've sold 7 million units so far. Uh, but that was a great sort of milestone in terms of, of shaping our direction. In terms of, of Arcex, um, there's no one significant milestone. Uh, I mean, startups are hard. Uh, of course, they are. Uh, no one goes into um, starting their own business for uh, for an easy life. And for us, it's really important to celebrate every little win, every little milestone that we achieve. And there were so many developing a physical product and, and getting that to market. But I suppose um, if I had to pick one, it would be um, completing our manufacturing in December and and having our first real customers uh, coming to our site and just the um, acknowledging that as a 
uh, as a key milestone that, that there were people out there prepared to pay for uh, the product that we we created. Yeah, it's great to 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 see that after such a long period of kind of research and development manufacturing, um, to see the results actually people people responding to it. Um, and is there any learning I would say in your um, entrepreneurial journey through this business previous that you'd like to share? Something that you would say if you were to do it all over again. Um, is there anything that you would do differently? I mean, obviously, we always say we we would, but you know, is there any specific one that comes to mind that you'd like to share with us? I think there's there's so many traits that are um, built into every entrepreneur, and it's got to be that that resilience to uh, to keep going when times are tough. Um, I have had a, a business in the past. I I created a it was a pretty niche uh, insurance business, um, and it was. I realized way too late that I should have pulled the plug and made a decision earlier. And I suppose that would be the, the point that the beauty of startups compared to large corporates, and I spent five years in a in a billion-dollar manufacturing um, global company, uh, is just that convoluted decision-making process. Whereas in a startup, you can make a decision. You can make 20 decisions in a day to reshape the business. And, and it would be trusting your gut yeah okay you've got to have data and some sort of um, evidence based for a decision but if it comes down to a, a gut feeling I would always sleep on it and the rest of the team would if, we, if it wasn't imminent or an urgent decision that had to be made it would be let's sleep on this and let's make a decision tomorrow and, and go with that rather than so many times just dithered and thought okay well let's give it another week or let's give it another month uh, let's in some extra features, let's incorporate some different functions into the product, um, and just wasted so much time on on a number of occasions. So, yeah, our decision making process still isn't perfect, but uh, that would be my my one, uh, I suppose, point of advice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, making making decisive and quick decisions, right, for, yep. um, uh, on, on on key key things. Um. I guess I want to sort of jump onto a different topic. I wanted to talk to you about um, your team and your employees because any great business needs uh, a great team behind it. Uh, and we know that it's so important to, to to have the right people working for you. What is your approach in, in terms of the recruitment and the people that you choose to work with and you know, to, to bring into the business? Yeah, absolutely. It's every successful business it all comes down to, to that team and the quality of that team and that adage of hire slow and, and fire fast is uh, is definitely true and it's not so much you know having that that slow convoluted interview process and again i compare it to my experience in the corporate world where i, I had responsibility for recruiting a marketing manager i found a great candidate but it was the four or five stages that he had to go through and he just got bored after stage number three and it was just too long a process that was taking almost a month um but it's you can have a number of stages but it is um not taking the the person that might tick a number of boxes as soon as possible because any startup you're short of time you're always short of resources okay if we need someone let's get them in okay that person yeah they look pretty good yeah okay but you know, let's wait until we find the perfect person. You know, we've survived this long. Let's wait a little bit longer. And um, on the opposite side of that is firing fast. Again, I'm guilty of it on a number of occasions, realizing that a person, uh, for a number of reasons, not being the great fit, things have changed over time. And I should have, with hindsight, uh, made that decision to say, look, this isn't working out for either of us. Let's, let's leave on good terms rather than letting that just continue that relationship turning a little bit toxic, it costing up so many people lots of emotional bandwidth. Um, so yeah, uh, firing fast. If it's not working out, yeah, just cut ties. Everyone can walk away and go on to other things. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's great advice for anybody listening. Uh, that's certainly something that we cover in our teaching. So um, it's great to hear that you know you've put it into practice. Um, I guess you're in the technology business, and it's a fast moving industry. Um, you're always finding ways of, you know, businesses find ways of uh, getting a competitive edge and staying ahead of a curve. How how do you do that? How do you do that in your in your 
particular niche? For us, not having the deep pockets of um, you know some of the big tech companies, uh, it's got to be customer uh, driven. So it, for us, it is very much listening to our customers, treating them like royalty, because um, we're getting so much feedback and so many good ideas that have improved both the hardware and the software. Um, as I said earlier, our hardware pretty much does what it says on the tin, but we're reliant on customers um, just to give us that feedback, come up with new use cases that we might not have uh, thought of before and uh, and responding to, to that. And we've got a product roadmap uh, for sure. We've got uh, a number of products um, uh, in uh, 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 coming down the line, but we uh, will take those as, as, as when they come. Um, but very much, it's a lot of it is focused on uh, on, on our customers, and I suppose that's a key point of differentiation is just offering the best customer service uh, that we possibly can. Yeah, and again, that's great advice. You know, listening to the customers and being driven by what it is that they want, um, and having a plan, but being flexible enough to listen to them. Yeah, that's that's great. So, I guess my final question: What is the future for? Uh, for your company and and yourself in the next three to five years and maybe beyond where do you see yourself go yeah good question we have my co-founder and i cto have been living breathing this for the last four years um we see an exit at some point down the line we don't want to give up too soon this is our baby we're nurturing it it's uh not even at that sort of toddler stage yet but we want to grow the business over the next three years or so and, and potentially um, exit. But yeah, as I mentioned, product roadmap, we've got exciting uh, products in the pipeline. Yes, of course, like so many other people, we're looking at the whole uh, AI piece and how we can incorporate that into, uh, into our software to really um, lift the level of functionality that our, our hardware offers. So yes, we've got a, a bit of a plan of who we might potentially exit to, but as always, um, no plan survives contact with the enemy, which is uh, an old military adage, but in a business uh, situation, it would be no plan survives contact with customers or the market or competitors. So we're, we're staying flexible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I wish you all the, all the best. It's an exciting time to be in the tech industry, um, as always. Um, but, you know, thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule today to, to be with us. Um, really appreciate um the tips uh, uh, i enjoyed the chat but the, the tips that the golden nuggets that that, that were um were there in our uh, in, in your in your talks and i'm i'm sure many people will benefit from this um thank thank you very much to coming to our post podcast and um wish you all the success pleasure thank you thanks for having me uh great to talk it's been a pleasure having you paul take care bye-bye then thanks all bye-bye